Hello, everyone. And welcome to, uh... The start of, uh... The start of what was the end of... An intense 30 minutes of, of tech. Uh, I got... I got a MacBook. I got it capturing. Fantasian's loaded and ready to go. Um, this is the latest game from Mistwalker. A company that is founded by Hironobu Sakaguchi, the guy who did... Uh, Final Fantasy, basically. Made Final Fantasy up until 7. Uh, he made 7, but that's when it started shifting over. He made 9, and then he left Square. Um, he made Lost Odyssey, a JRPG for the Xbox that has a lot of Final Fantasy spirit in it. It's kind of like, it really is Final Fantasy HD. Um, and he kind of has made some mobile games and stuff like that. This is much more in the spirit of his classic work. It's called Fantasian. Um... As you can kind of tell from the title screen, the sort of visual gimmick is that all of the all of the background art is an actual diorama. It's an actual like uh, um, like clay structure kind of thing. So Final Fantasy was always rather toy-like in its in its implementation. You know, you're literally looking at like a dollhouse of characters, sort of walking around and pantomiming and, and telling a story. It is uh, it is classic theater. You know. Uh, so, I think, um, artistically, this is a great choice, because it, it really does kind of match beautifully with that sensation of looking down on a tiny world. Like, you're, you're almost a god to these tiny JRPG people who are struggling against their gods and all that. Why MacBook? Because this game is only on Apple Arcade. This game is only on Apple Arcade right now. So, on that note, allow me to reach down with my finger on a trackpad and tap the controller icon. And pray to God that it works. For some reason, before I had to mash like a lot of buttons, and then it started working. Okay, there we go. It looks a little quiet. I hope this thing can run this at 60 FPS at 1080. We'll see. This should be a pretty low. Like a low overhead game, right? Glad you're streaming this. I really would like to play it, but no Max in the house. See, I was I was bummed because I was like, man, I can't play it. And then I thought about it, and I was like, oh, Steph actually has, she's got a, a MacBook. So I, I dusted it off. Uh, how's the art going? I changed it, but going very well. Um. I'm gonna juice the volume there a little bit. You get a little. I don't know who did the music for this. I don't know if it what if it is uh, if it is the Dream Team together again. Ooh, no. Okay, that's that's the go button. Got it. You could just emulate a Mac. I guess you could. Yeah. It is Uematsu. All right. Oh shit, man! Like my like my biggest question. They know, like they know, they know who this game is targeting. That was a Tie Fighter. PJ, thanks for the prime. Oh, Ziggurat, thanks for the prime. Yeah, got a lot of animes, I'm sure. This kid's gonna be a 500-year-old amnesiac who's also, like, got galactic-level magic power but doesn't remember it. And her mom's, her mom's soul is in her earrings. Their earrings, excuse me. I've never seen the perfect opportunity for a genderless pronoun. Than right now. Old habits die hard, though. Yeah, sick, sick. Title card. That's a that's some wild. 
artwork, I haven't seen this game look like that. But I guess it is that creepy mix of, like, technology and fantasy. That's always been a Sakaguchi thing. He likes that. It's like, it's like the anime side of cyberpunk. There's a Death Star back there. Sorry, I'm rambling. This is just so awesome. Is the protect he or she? At this point, it's they. We'll see. Oh. Leo Robot? Or is that person just using robot terms? That's neat. The background is that, like, perfect... Like, kind of low res. It's got that blurriness, that fuzziness to it. God, this is the real Final Fantasy VII HD. Sometimes I wonder... I wonder sometimes if artists, like, do shit on purpose to reference their older habits, or if they just... that's just the kind of music they make. Like, what's the difference? Lady McShooty. Thanks for the resub. This battle music sounds familiar? Yeah, it, it really does sound like the, like... It sounds like, uh, Bombing Run from Seven. But I think that's on purpose. I think Uematsu knows that he's writing, like, nostalgia bait. At least at this part of the game. Like, this is the beginning for people in their 30s, you know? So, is this a new Uematsu track, alright? I mean, yeah, but I, I think I give Uematsu credit for being like, alright, this this is like a... I'm in a vanity role on this project. People are gonna come for that Uematsu sound. Uh, they're gonna want to feel like the beginning of Final Fantasy VII again, so... I have to admit though, all that like machinery, all that machinery and paneling and stuff, that was a big part of Final Fantasy VII, but it was all like CG and pre-rendered. It's fun to see that reflected back through physical medium. It kind of ends up looking like like 79 Star Wars, or was it 78? Anyway, A New Hope. It's just like trying to look very like overly technical, but still obviously made by hand. That's delightful. God, it really does have the charm of pre-rendered backgrounds. It's got that, like, perfect amount of just, like, not quite right. <laughs> like, adorably smudged. Man, I remember... I had a friend in uh, junior high who was, like, super into Final Fantasy VII. And I was like, oh, that's great! Hey! Um, there's another game that's called Final Fantasy, and it's really good, too. And I brought over Final Fantasy 3, and I was like, dude, check this out. And we started playing it, and he was like, oh, man, they don't even hit him? And he was like, yeah, because in 6, like, they just kind of hop. They, like, kind of attack in place. They don't actually move around. I guess they do a little bit, but it just looks goofy. Whereas in 7, it's all 3D, so they can actually run up and s hit people with swords. And I was like, oh, damn, man, that's the thing that, like, that's what got you at the You're not into it now? I was like, oh... That was an interesting uh, lesson that, like, just sometimes people aren't into the same thing you are. What works for you doesn't work for people. Like, everyone?
That's kind of cool. At least I think I had that right. Oh. Okay, never mind. I thought it was going to save inputs with a cool little trick, but it didn't quite. Alright. With limitations of the tech. Yeah. And I, it just seemed like it, it was re... Yeah. For me, it was a reminder that the battle scenario is just an abstraction. You know? This is a... This is a, um... A representation of the combat, but it's not the actual combat. It's stage fighting. Um... And, and it's, I guess that division sort of bled away when it started to go over into 3D battle scenes, which, you know, were far more interesting from a technological perspective. They made the right, they made the right choice. I think sticking by the, sticking by the artistic distinction of it wasn't quite worthy, or worth it, but. Oh, save point. Sick. Ah, feels good. Feels good to save in a save point again. Wait, how did it do that? Wait, what? Huh? Is that just video? I was I was wondering how it was gonna do that. I thought it was just going to be like straight up, uh, like pre-rendered style, where it would just go to a different still image. So they, wow, they have like frame perfect, uh, that makes sense. You know, they, they did that stuff with Parasite Eve back in the day. You just couldn't blend video like that. Um, that's really cool. That makes a lot of sense. This is like, technically, I see a lot in it that they clearly wanted to do on the PlayStation 1. Just like perfectly, perfectly executed though. It's like, this is what they had in mind all along. Or maybe just a, a revisit of certain ambitions and see what they look like. Huh. I'll protect you. Chris Kringle, thanks for the cheer. It's not that hard to pair a 3D model to a video. Just tricky to get it right. Yeah, that's... That is, as far as I'm concerned, that's the black magic of, of film production. I don't understand how any of that works. I respect the heck out of it, though. That sounds cool. That, to me, that's truly the art of um, making your imagination, no matter how wild, making it real. That's that's the vector of like true imagination to reality. Okay, huh. Yeah, I guess you just, you build the sets and then you film the camera fly through along the exact track and space that it's going to take. Ah. He, he's got amnesia. Excuse me, they've got amnesia. I don't know if that's been pinned down yet. Why not throw around the classics? Hey, what's up, PCG Doctor Captain? What's this game about? I don't know yet. It's it started N Media Ray, like Final Fantasies are wont to do. I imagine I'm going to escape this current place of turmoil, find some sort of uh, safety or return home, back to a hideout, a camp, or something like that. A few side characters will be introduced, and then there will be conversation about the state of the world. And then I'll pick up more, like, lore building details. This stuff is all... I think it's all pretty figured out. These, uh, these robots... Let's... Hold on. These robots are... are um, a pretty good way to sort of drop hints about world status, too. We have competing types of amnesia, though. 
see here. Skills, gear. Oh, gotta admit, reading tutorial messages is like against a a sequencer telling me to run and somebody banging a pipe on a wall. That feels pretty Final Fantasy VII. Card redeem? Oh, there was? Ooh. Wait. Eh? I saw there's a bits badge. Sign up to get your COVID shot. Um, yeah, I actually already I have a uh I have a uh, appointment for my second next week. Yeah. So I'm gonna be in the clear very soon. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be invincible. Ugh, gosh. Those camera transitions look so good. Uh, there's treasure. It's gonna be a potion or something. All right, Phoenix down. Which one are you getting? Uh, Pfizer. I think. But my day's been good. Um, got to play some Final Fantasy XIV stuff. That's always fun. I, uh, by the grace of God, Steve Jobs smiled down on me from heaven, and this got working. But it wasn't. It was an uphill battle. I gotta admit, my uh, my computer monitor can be a little finicky when it comes to HDMI. So, just took a, a lot of jiggling and options toggling, but finally got it going. Heard Pfizer side effects aren't as bad. Hopefully you don't have any side effects. And yeah, the first shot was nothing. I... It was like arm was a, a bit sore, and that was it. But I've heard that from other people. We'll see. We'll see if the second one blows me away. Luckily, uh, you know, I don't really have that much going on, so I can be sick if I need to be. Yeah. Doesn't two little robot buddies seem a little excessive? I'm still getting the lay of the land around here. And they want to throw two robots at me? Oh, uh, hold on. Before we get to our... We, before we get to our, uh, place of respite, our, uh, our port in a storm, we first have to fight one boss that has one very simple mechanic. Usually a counter mechanic of some sort. Or an attack right now kind of mechanic. That's it. That's another, putting another one on the bingo board. gonna ride it oh I see It could have just been a hallway out of here. And I could have just, like, walked out, but no. They're like, no. 
Make him ride a shipping container thrown by a crazy arm. All right. You're the writer here. I've seen it. In my in my dreams, I've witnessed the perfect video game. It's made out of clay, and people ride shipping containers. <laughs> they said I was crazy. They said no one would play it. And no one did. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm backtracking like that. I just wanted to see that again. Oh, first Leo was a guy? Alright. I mean, Leo's kind of... Leo could go either way. Pretty anime boy like Jojo. Just let it happen. I'm pretty much okay with all of this right now. It is wild seeing uh, inventory screens that like have the information complexity of a J uh, like a 16-bit JRPG. There's really not that much going on there, Mon or like numbers-wise. Wait a minute, what? Did I jump off at the wrong time? Says you're streaming art? I swear I changed it. I changed it. Which is just being sassy. Wait, perfect guard. Is that a statistical thing or was it because I was mashing the button? Also, wait. Yeah, I rode the box back over here. This is where I came from, isn't it? Did I not jump off the box at the right time? Oh. Wait, where the hell? Let's start with the premise. Uh, we don't know yet. Dude woke up in uh, a factory with shit, shit exploding. That's kind of it. There's been some mentions of, like, other lore things that don't make a lot of sense. Okay. Is this the singular boss with the singular mechanic? Maybe. Scorpion tank? Yeah. Uh. Ooh. Synth has some Final Fantasy VIII flavor to it. Yeah, this music is wild. Uematsu gets very, like, prog with his, like, boss theme sometimes. Yeah, it kind of feels very man with machine gun. Or is it I'm a Lion, one of those? Huh. I like those, that like MIDI kind of orchestra hit. It's definitely old school Final Fantasy sounds mixed in there. Yeah, Laguna. Wait, what did I say? Yeah, whenever he plays Laguna, his battle theme. I thought that was Man with a Machine Gun, the name of the track. Thought about playing RE3 on Inferno? I have. That actually sounds like a good time. Uh, I, I would like to try that. Ro 
Robo Organizer. Oh, this is, is it mechanic time? I think it is! Okay, here's how to use barrier. Got it. All right. I think I understand. A charge up attack. I mean, that's that's a pretty loose mechanic, uh, but I'll still I'm gonna still give myself credit on the bingo sheet for that one. Although that's that's a pretty surface level observation when it comes to a Final Fantasy like. Okay. wonderful mash of all that I love. It's very Laguna. It is. It really, really is. Those random orchestra hits are just so delightful. Thing to cover NP, man. I was I was going sick with it. Daddy Gun Run, thank you for the resub. Like, the top of the tower is just sort of blurred. It's not, like, cut. They didn't make, like, a, a broken tower model and photograph that. That's really interesting. Huh. It seems like sometimes, too, they just map a real-life texture onto a 3D object. Which is still a really, like... A really, like, PS1 technological thing to do. Macrophage, thank you for the resub. How's it going? Going very well. I'm very excited to play this game. I'm very, uh, I'm very grateful that I get to. I did, I did not think I was going to be able to do this. So this is fantastic. Oh god, that background is so perfect. And it's like got that really stark lighting too, because pre-rendered backgrounds in the day just didn't have very good shadow and light propagation, so. You get a really good, but but kind of different flavor of that with this, this stark lighting. Yeah, I want to use it, though. Unless, did I, did everyone get healed? No. Look at all that MP I could recover. Why won't you let me use this? When used at a save point. Am I not on the save point? Pretty sure I am. Oh. Boink. I used my tent. Uh. Like the texture on the ground, and it is uh, it's just like the perfect graininess of a photo. Little effects like smoke coming out of things. Oh, that's so great. It's, it's wild. It's wild what a beautiful uh, substitute photography is for pre-rendered backgrounds. Oh, man. Here, Lobos. Thank you for the sub. Is this on the Switch? No. Unfortunately, it is not. It is on Apple Arcade. This is iOS only. Yeah, I have a... <clears throat> I have a MacBook plugged into some capture hardware, and that's how I'm playing it. And, uh, shockingly, you can just Bluetooth sync an Xbox controller to a Mac, and it works. Weird. Maru Sean, thank you for the Prime. 
Are there microtransactions since this is mobile? I don't think so. It's just a part of Apple Arcade, so that's kind of the... You have to sign up for Apple Arcade to, uh, to play it. Memories coming back. Because of this iPod weird thing? <laughs> what? That's like a very Y2K, like Final Fantasy X iPod. It's like a remote control car. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of cute. I just had no idea what to do. Shit, where do we go? <laughs> the boss just shows up again. Damn it! Ha! Right you are. It's a pretty great camera angle. You know what's what's crazy? This battle theme has such wacky rhythm, and it keeps changing time signature. It's never it's never predictable. Well, at least not yet. Not like a four four track would be. So it's it sounds like you're always in a different part of the song. It almost sounds like there's like jazzy kind of uh, sensibilities to it. It's like it's figuring itself out like you are. Okay, I have, I have two barriers. They were nice. Umatsu can't help but to experiment all the time. I mean, of course, he's uh, he's been doing it for long enough. I just think it, it like serves the function of the game's music to be so irregular. Slash might do more damage. Ah. All right, let's see. An attack is like 200. Oh, I should have analyzed. Oops. My god, they tell you the items. Mother of god. How civilized. Preformed layering? Makes a lot of sense. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, what are you playing this on? A uh, MacBook. I should probably put that in the title. Oh, it actually just straight up tells you all the numbers. That's nice. Ah, cool. Neat. I just think that's neat. Uh... That was a critical, though. <laughs> Not good for my data. My calculations. Really using MP Leo's MP for anything else. Yeah, it's just an AoE attack. Alright. That animation of uh actually I don't know what that character's name is, but what? The, the larger of my robo buddies. Ooh. 
the animation uh throwing around the shields is pretty adorable. Yeah, come on. beating up a sad laser robot because it attacked us while we were trying to escape something <laughs> they already fixed it what the hell man oh yeah the little repair beetles that's right that's why it got up so fast is he gonna transform into like a a superman a super dude super anime we got broads Warp? Later, losers. <laughs> okay. There's that TIE fighter again. Mecteria. The twitching mechanical infestation endlessly crawls forth from a hole in the sky. It lures humans in to absorb their life energy. It replicates at alarming speeds and will soon cover the entire world. Damn, that's the, that's like the sound it makes? Ugh. The Mecteria has a cata catastrophic effect on the land. People see it as the act of a malevolent god. Soon, across the world, people began to whisper his name. So we have to straight up... We're mounting up to kill god. That was fast. Okay, quaint village. I didn't think we were going to change perspective. Um, I guess we're switching over to Quaint Village invaded by Empire uh, territory. Okay, alright. Got it. Alright, so we aren't switching perspective. Character going to Safe Haven, uh, introducing side characters, and getting lore dump about the world. I think, I think the dart might have landed in the middle, but then again, you can see this stuff from a mile off. It's cozy, and there's really no better way to do it. Hell yeah, treasure! Oh, come on. Oh, cat. Cat. Hey there. Damn it. Uh, well, I can't win them all, I guess. Oh. Wow, this is surreal. The cat, the cat is so HD. Ah. I'm like on top of the fence for a little bit. Masking isn't like super super on point, which makes it a little weird. <laughs> I wonder if that was done programmatically, like it was just done uh, via software. I guess that would take a long time if you did it all by hand. Oh, and your days are numbered. You're gonna rue the day that I walked into your town square. Let me tell you. 
I would say simply because I'm here, you've got about 10 days. Damn, that's pretty brutal though. Like a technological infestation that literally sucks people's life away. That's the like the world threat we're dealing with. I should have I should have guessed NPC running in circles. That's a that's a real <laughs> Hey, hey, come here. I guess you can't talk. Hell yeah it is. Just random NPCs standing around. Shops with the sign of what they are right in front of them. We're home, everyone. Oh, man, this camera angle. Yowza. Oh, my God. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. That's really, that's really incredible. <sighs> yeah, the frame rate's starting to eat it, though. It's on, t well, I, I guess I don't, I don't know what MacBook it is, but. That's charming as hell, but that is, that is like 100% nostalgia, I feel like. I just, I'm still, you know, breath is taken by just how beautiful, how beautifully, uh, handcrafted sets echo the intention of, uh, pre-rendered 3D. That, like, real cozy Toy Story era 3D. Oh, man. Going behind the innkeeper to get an item? That's pretty classic. Getting thrown out? Too bad. Got your goddamn Phoenix Downs. Get a free potion? Alright. Okay. It's just eating like a, a, a table sized steak. Perspective was all whack back in the day, too, with 3D pre rendered stuff. Oh, the, okay, so that's interesting. Okay, so it is a sort of like. It, there may be video, but there's like, there's a con interpolation between the frame. Like, so if you look on the barrel, between you can see like two, two spigot pipes where it's trying, like kind of changing place. So it is like, I guess, AI assisted uh, video transitions. It's kind of what it looks like. Ah, oh, come on. I can't root around and punch through all the tables. Look at the little gems in the desk. Aw. Oh man, there's not like three identical rooms to poke through? Oh, fine. Pretty sure you're stealing everything? Hell yeah, you are. That's a time honored tradition. Uh, hi, hi, or, or sorry. Is it higher Lobos? Here, Lobos? Uh, yes, this is, this is from the grandpappy of Final Fantasy himself. Hiro Nobu Sakaguchi. What? Covering the world in mechteria? Clearly that's a reference to how Square Enix is overproducing Final Fantasy VII and trying to cover the earth in materia. But that's not what should happen with art, as said by Hironobu Sakaguchi in the latest game. Thank you for reading my blog post on Kotaku.com. Come here, chicken. Give me the funny sound.
There are a lot of cats around here. Solid rhythm. Oh, secret treasure! Ooh, feels good. Huh? Oh. Okay. I would I would be bummed about three equipment slots, but I'm pretty sure that's all Final Fantasy VII had. Looking forward to catching this on YouTube. Delighted you're playing through this, though. Enjoy it and good night. Well, thank you, Post Postal Fuzz Buddy. Again, man, a solid rhythm in that, in that ladder. Yeah, I'm just taking it all in. I'm not saying very much, or I'm just incoherent... Well, incoherent ramblings are kind of a mainstay, but... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little less... Maybe a little less chatty than usual, because this is just... Look, I'm I am, I am truly bad, vibing on this. I think Look my at leg's that broken. bucket! So Look at that bucket of weapons! Hold me. on. Get yourself out of here while you still can. Do you see that? Do you see how cute that is? Golly. Chris Kringle, thank you very much for the cheer. Research lens. Is that just cast analyze or whatever? Yeah, it does, okay. What? Hey! No! I wanted a weapon. Which COD is this? This is COD 2. COD Control. Okay. Ooh! That's- I do like the idea of, like, gear having skills. Oops. Nope. And if there's crafting, I probably shouldn't sell anything. How's this game so far? Um, varied by the numbers. Spicy whales, but in a good way. It's very cozy. Um, it's, it's pretty well crafted. There's just, there's something about the flow of combat, the animations, the speed of it. It feels good to play. Um... The backgrounds are, are delightful. Every new interior, I just kind of like stop for a second to sort of take it in. There's little bubbles. There's little bubbles in the aqua tank over here. I don't know. It really does have the sort of... I guess what it was about 90s, late 90s CG is that you could only get so detailed, right? You could only like, you were working with blobs of CG and then like muddy textures and you could try your best to recreate real life items. But the like perspectives were always a bit off. The colors were always a little strange. You can see like, there's like glue coming up on the, on the treasure chest on like the, um, the gilding, I guess. There's like, it's kind of like peeling up. Uh, yeah, and then there's just a giant potion bottle. F forcing everything to be handmade seems to sort of recreate those bottlenecks of, uh, everything has to be, like, like, we can only make things so small, and once they start getting that small, then they start to look weird, because we just can't craft them that finely. I don't know. It's, uh, it is really fascinating just how it, it has captured that feeling. And I've, I'm saying that a lot, so I'll, I'll stop. But, uh... Has to be readable? Yeah. Some things you have to exaggerate to make them readable. And that kind of, I think, created its own little art style. Spicy Whale says, I'll probably stick to Dragon Quest XI on my JRPG list. I mean, that's not a bad call at all. Uh, thank you for the resub, by the way. Oh, that wallpaper. Dragon Quest XI, you really can't go wrong with. It's a fantastic game. It's kind of like <clears throat> the most, excuse me, 
the most uh, linear, direct, and sort of... Mm, what's the word? Expectation satisfying. Evolution of Dragon Quest. Yeah. Kimmy, thank you very much for the resub. I am having a great week. I am enjoying the heck out of this game so far. Old Sid. Maybe Sid's gonna be a chef instead of a, a pilot in Fantasian verse. Heard a few things about the amount of grinding you have to do later on, but I have yet to play it. Interesting. Huh. It's it's strange. Everyone like seems to associate classic RPGs with grinding and NES RPGs for sure, yes. You you Oh an eleven, okay. Okay, yeah. To some degree to some degree, grinding is Dragon Quest. So, I wouldn't say that they would do it maybe that way on purpose, but... I wouldn't expect Fantasia to be that way. That'd be that'd be interesting. Final Fantasy, yeah. With with the exception of, like, the alternate in-game challenges and stuff. Never seemed to be that motivated around, uh... Making you get the levels. Four, maybe? Four got pretty tough. Um... Or at least, I think I played the, like, I think I played also the, the kick you in the dick version. The Japanese version. It was like the Game Boy Advance version, I think. You have to grind it in 11. I only just barely beat the bo final boss. Ooh. That's what sucks, is when you are grinding and you're sick of grinding and then you make an attempt at the boss and it takes, like, two hours because you're exactly where you should be and then you end up losing or something. Ugh. And you know, you like, not only do you have to do the whole fight again, but also you have to grind more. DS version of 4 was made to be harder than normal because people said the game was too easy. Maybe that's the one? I think I bought it not knowing that. And it like whooped my ass a couple of times. I was I was humbled. I was like, I had no idea 4 was this bad. Um, I mean, like in a good way. Because there were some... Uh, there were, I remember there were some very unique boss fights that kind of specifically used Final Fantasy 4's battle mechanics. Um... Umatsu's channeled a bit of nine here. I mean, what? Uh, there's a Glockenspiel? I, I think what I hear most of uh, through Umatsu's work right now is like. God, it, just wild. He's dedicated to being eclectic, um, which gives him, I think, creative license to reference. throw in references to any musical Final Fantasy, but also, even in a way, being wildly all over the map musically is kind of Final Fantasy unto itself. Seven's, Seven's soundtrack is is kind of musically all over the place, too. It's wonderful. I'm going to start replaying Forward soon just to reacquaint myself with it in preparation for Endwalker. I've kind of wanted to do that, too. Uh, because Four also had some real bangers, some real great music in it. That does look like it could be useful. That looks like a real handy gadget. Ah, uh, are we going to have like a literal like separation of style? Is there going to be a techno world and a fantasy world? Huh. 
Oh, okay. We got a puzzle. And I've solved it. Very much for the prime sub. Let's give it a good tug. Hmm. We got us a mystery. Plot is afoot. So, like, the, the... The bottles in that shelf are, like... 3D, right? Maybe not. Oh, wait, the shelf moved, I think. I think it's a... Again. We got babes. Hot Final Fantasy... Fantasian babes. Excuse me. <laughs> Legally distinct babes. Oh, flower shop, for fortune telling shop. Yeah, legally adjacent Aerith. Yeah, nothing's better than being like drunk off your ass at 2 p.m. wearing clam diggers and and, and open-toed sandals. I want to be that guy. That's some excellent uh, lower building there, fellas. Thank you. Been there, brother? Yeah. Yeah. This dialogue? Yeah, the dialogue's actually pretty good. There's been some fun, like... There's been a lot of humanity pumped into the dialogue. Little little mentions here and there. Wah. What? There's treasure there. I want it. Who's gonna get that? Whoa! I thought it was there. That's what I'm talking about. Actually, that dog might have been taking me to more treasure. Got to get up Monster Runner High's grind. It's so good. I want to play it on Switch. I want to play it on PC. <laughs> That's basically it. I'm just being a, a frame rate snob. Everyone does sound like they're having a good time with it, though. Everyone's having a grand old time. Laughing and playing. Nice. NPC that won't let me buy. Didn't have that on my bingo card, unfortunately. So, gotta go to the old district fortune-telling shop. Those transitions are pretty slick when they, uh, when they hit at 60 FPS. This is a new game. Uh, it came out, like, a week ago, I think. This is primarily used to delay battles with opponents and focus on exploration. Fantasian is being released in two parts. Part 1, which is available now, is said to be roughly 20 to 30 hours in length. Part 2 is estimated to be similar length and set to release in the second half of 2021. Cool! Very cool. 
Not only is there 20 to 30 hours of Fantasian in front of me, but there's two parts. Uh, look at all that clay. You want to see the backside of it? Because I guess they just cut it in half. Yeah, two discs. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Only now they can give you the disc when it's done. You don't have to wait. Dang good. Uh, let's see here. Somebody was. Uh, it's considerably easier than World, but that might be a good thing for people. I imagine it still scales up to be as hard as World, right? I could see them making the the initial like ten hours of a uh, Monster Hunter way easier, but I'd be shocked if they actually lowered the overall difficulty cap of a game. Well, this is awfully, awfully serious music for just fighting random one-shot mice. Maybe they're not one-shot. It'll probably get there later, but it's easy now. Huh. That's interesting. Aw, oh, lame. Okay. I gotta admit, though, if you, if you want a classic... 16-bit RPG, or like a 32-bit. If you want a PS1 era RPG, here it is. There have been quite a few games out like this. Um, what was it? The, uh, I Am Setsuna and the Lost Sphere uh, team have been making games kind of like this. They don't quite have the uh, the charm of the, the uh, clay model gimmick, though, which is pretty nice. That is working for me right now, I gotta say. Kind of over that gameplay at this age. I wouldn't hold that. I don't hold that against you, Bad. I could see it maybe being something that's sort of stimulating while you're watching something on TV. I don't like that company's aesthetics. Their music puts me to sleep. I mean, same. I, I never got that far in I had Setsuna because I always fell asleep. Uh, <laughs> Octopath. Uh, I don't know. Octopath was just kind of a solid 7 out of 10 all around. Everything was a 7 out of 10. There's no musical sting when you win? Oh yeah, there's no victory fanfare. Maybe that'll come in later. The battle theme seems like it's still pretty intense for something that's just going to be the random encounter theme for the rest of the game. Oh, Bernard. Papa! Mine, Papa! Let's say Octopath had at least 8.5 visuals. The enemy artwork was quite good. But I found the uh, I found the tilt shift filter to be a little grating because it wasn't it wasn't right. Um, it just blurred the top and bottom of the screen as opposed to actually rendering depth. So like there'd be like a tree, right, and it'd be in the foreground. Except even though it's ostensibly out of focus because it's not at the right focal length, the top part of the tree would be in focus because it would just reach the center of the frame. I don't know. It just didn't didn't look right. It would have looked way cooler if it were, like, actual depth of field. And in a game that's mostly polygons and, and kind of, like, low-res textures, you'd think that wouldn't be that hard to technically get away with. I disliked how washed out it felt if you turned off the vignette. You could either play uh, the game in dark mode or staring at the sun mode. <laughs> yeah, I liked the idea, and it looked good at a glance, but to me, for me... Octopath's visuals got got old pretty fast. I don't know that I could get old. I don't know that this could get old because every every single background piece of art is going to have like little charming imperfections that are just different than having a 
a filter slapped over something. <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like a lot of the... <clears throat> excuse me. Looks like a lot of the 3D masks were kind of generated from like 3D, 3D telemetry data or something. It's like the chickens aren't getting masked out. But the larger structures, it, it seems to be pretty accurate. Designs worked well enough for you? Eh. I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna talk, try to talk anyone out of liking that game. I liked it well enough. I finished it. Which is actually pretty rare, now that I think about it. Yeah, we need more Octopath Traveler attempts, so it's great if people buy it. Not for me, but yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's that's a really good way of putting it. And I, I that sounds really condescending, because I think uh, Octopath was still enjoyable. Hey. this to Octopath and this is certainly better. I just wish it would come out on a reasonable console. <laughs> yeah. I mean I guess I guess my hope is that Mistwalker got a fat ass check from Apple and that's going to keep them in business for a while. Um So and in a sense like of course I consider saying that cuz I actually figured out how to how to find a way to play it. Um but I, I can hope against hope that, yeah, eventually, in addition to the hopeful fat-ass money that Mistwalker got to cash over this, that uh, it will also come out to other platforms. That looks spooky. I really wish I haven't had like oh wait you can just you can free aim it oh 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 that's way cooler all right I thought you just had to target an enemy I'm purple now. Oh, I guess I'm coming back here. Mechteria. It's like a machine in Terra, so it's mechanizing the land. Very clever. Why did I do that? Maybe, is that hurting me? Maybe a little? Thought it was mech bacteria? Ooh. Mechanical bacteria. Mechteria. Okay. Well, it's not mechteria, right? It's mechteria? No, it is mechteria. You're right. Haha. <laughs> that's way, that's probably way more accurate. Yeah, I think you guys are right. That That's a way better, <laughs> way better interpretation. He's going to visit an oracle. That's pretty on the nose. It's nano machines all the way down. Always has been. Ooh! Hit me with them big African drums. She's even walking pigeon toed. I love her. Marry me. Oh my god, marry me. Let me smell you, please. Please. Please, God.
Well, that was quirky. Character design, character designs look very near automata. I mean, I can't, I can't disagree with like the swept, swept hair, the black and white, the like belts and stuff, the high boots. It's not quite as, uh, not quite as as dominatrixy as near, but. Guess what's more important than you? Oh no! All right, fine. How embarrassing. She heard that sound too, she knows. Look at the little crystal orb and it's actually like refracting light. God, that is something that they would straight up put in a pre-rendered background just to show off that they could render it. And now it's just like, it's all wrapped around. Now it's all practical, but it's the same thing. Ah. Uh. Love when you and Bruce and Krikens talk to the internet show. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun chat to have. Two ninety nine, two ninety nine for a key, right? Actually, I don't, I don't know if there's any monetization hooks in this game. There's certainly nothing in the main menu about it. I think it's just a game. Oh shit, he's doing this thing again. Uh, he used to do these like uh, sort of visual short stories in Lost Odyssey, and I am, I had no idea he was gonna do that again in another game. Awesome, hold on. I don't know if I should read it. I'll read it. I was walking through a forest. The rays of sun, the birds chirping. The beautiful scenery, like something from a painting. It brought a smile to my face. The forest treasure. The quest. Disjointed words drifted into my mind. I don't know why I was in the forest. At any rate, I was in a hurry, or at least I think I was. <laughs> Chief Beef Loco. Hey, popping in to watch an ad for me. Well, thank you. And you're a mod? Ooh, stepping up in the world. I don't have a radio type voice. I wasn't using it. Jeez. What a mean thing to say. What a mean thing to say. Yeah, maybe some bands are in order. I have to, uh... I have to, I have to use moderation tools to protect my ego. <laughs> you can't be mad at me now that I said sorry. No, you're just gonna make me, uh, bust out my deeper voice. <laughs> As I walked through the tall grass, I came across a flower garden. Oops. Oh. The flowers before my eyes were so captivatingly beautiful that I let my guard down. I can't remember much beyond that, only the vastness of the garden. I touched the flowers without a second thought. I suddenly found myself lying on the ground. My entire body was in shock, my consciousness hazy, my lips dry. That's right. The flowers I touched were highly poisonous. Could this be how I die? <laughs> How I die. Then as I lay there thinking oddly calm. Clear, radiant light enveloped in my body. I don't remember for how long. But I do know that I wanted to stay like that forever. A soft glow was so peaceful. That's right. I was saved by you. Huh. 
<laughs> this is how they illustrate it. That's kind of cool. I guess they did the same thing in Lost Odyssey. They would do these like visual short stories to sort of show fragments of memories coming back to the main character. So it's an interesting thing that they would use that device again. Magic? But magic is forbidden? Lost memory trope is boring. It's, yeah, it's done a lot. That's a flashback? Sure. Wait, what? a flashback. Yeah, I don't like... Where would I go to buy... to buy keys? I don't think it's like that. I think it's like an actual video game. does it cost? What? Why is that where the conversation ends? Huh? I don't understand. Have you seen the trailer for <laughs> Van Neinst? I have, yeah. Saw it this morning. Cool stuff. Magnet car. Ain't a problem in the world when you got a magnet car. Wait, hold on. There's treasure. Treasure, treasure, treasure. Can I not? I oh, will find. I didn't go down the well. Oh, is that what people meant by Dragon Qu Maybe. But yeah, finally going to space. So, you know, two movies. Two movies will be time traveling. You ever seen a dinosaur drift? Because you will. It was weird seeing Han be like... I don't know, he was a little... He was a little... He was a little energetic. He was always very, like, pastoral in, in other movies. Very calm. So he's, like, screaming and being a normal Fast and Furious, or that was a little odd. Maybe this is, like, Han with his behavioral limiter taken off. So he's in full action mode. This was... We only saw Han at, like, 20% power before. And now he's like Superman. Back from the dead. Han is actually a different... A different, uh, species of racer. When he gets exploded, he just goes into a coma. And he's actually recovering. I had to write more than him just sitting there eating chips. But he's so good at that. How many chips do you think that actor puts away when he films a Fast and Furious movie? Vam the Malevolent. Vam is a pretty good name for a JRPG villain. That's the god? Alright. Thunderous roar blasted from the fortune telling room waking Kina. Kina, Kina! Owen cried out from behind the door. Surprised and worried, Kina hastily rose to her feet. When Kina opened the old door to the fortune-telling room, she saw Owen sitting on the floor, slumped against a shelf with his mouth flapping like a fish. Owen, are you alright? Kina rushed over to the old man and helped him back to his feet. Once he noticed her, Owen couldn't keep from shouting, Kina! Something incredible has happened! 
What was that terrible noise? She asked. In the uproar, neither of them was able to speak coherently. Owen continued to yell. It was Vam the Malevolent! He appeared before me and gave me an incredible power. No one will call me a charlatan anymore. From now on, my words will become true prophecy. Was Owen dreaming or was she? She could not understand his words at first. That night, Owen rested on the floor and Kina drifted back to shallow sleep. On the floor, man. After that evening, Owen's behavior began to change. He began charging customers excessive amounts of money. But that was not the only surprising thing. Owen's predictions, all of them, came true. Owen could see through each customer's past and future and give them precise words of guidance. He was no longer an ordinary fortune teller, he was a prophet. It was a Flavio. Near also had segments like this? Yeah, it did. Uh. Word spread of Owen's talent, and soon everyone in the town of N knew his name. The power to see past and future. There were many who so strongly sought the insight his abilities granted that no price would deter them. Ooh, D. Watton, thanks for the prime. Listen carefully, Kina. Mankind's greed for money has the most powerful energy. Vam the Malevolent, no. Lord Vam gifted me this power. People's hearts move for things they desperately want. Remember this. Kina couldn't quite understand him. These words didn't sound like the Owen she knew. Ever since that night, she heard him mutter a certain name. Vam the Malevolent. As the days went on, Kina grew increasingly concerned. She feared that this name meant something truly dangerous. Okay, interesting. So that's how they do, like, exposition dump? That's pretty clever. The iOS game, are you emulating it? Uh, no, I'm... Uh, I'm running it off a MacBook. Huh? What? What? They just turned around and there's a dragon? Oh, birds, alright. spread out. I don't know that I can hit two of them. Maybe that's the point. If only I had a party member with a different kind of AoE. Have there been any cutscenes? I mean, there's been dialogue. I guess there hasn't been video. Yeah, they're learning. They're starting to spread out. What? Oh, cool. Oh! Pulling the left thumbstick back like a bow and moving it around. Oh, that's cool as heck! Red General X2, thanks for the sub. Hey to you, sir. Back like a bow and... Oh, huh. Yeah, I guess you just can curve it against the wall or something. Huh. Okay, all right, I think I understand. Huh. Neat. Hey, Chum, thanks for gifting a couple subs. Good to see you. Yeah, 
Yeah, we want it now. Kirinobu Sakaguchi looked over his works. He said, I've created these wonderful things. But what could improve it? What if I made it more like Wanted? That's the one thing. Back in the day, we wanted to make it like the comic series Wanted, and we haven't done it. It's the one thing we had to do. Yay! Don't forget the point of an attack time bar is to tell you who to kill first? Well, sorta. Sometimes, it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> you still take exactly the same number of hits. And that's really all that matters, is how many hits you take by the end. Or how fast, how many turns. Hmm. That's kind of cool. They show you all the, like... Transition points? Yeah. Oh man. Someone could two two shot it. Never been more correct. Oh, oh. these transitions are always so crazy. Ah. Game looks great. Such a shame few people will play this. Well, I don't know. I think plenty of people have uh, iOS devices. playable on phone? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Aren't, uh, I think all Apple Arcade games are playable across all their platforms, right? I don't know anything about Apple Arcade, but that is the service that this game is on, and it is exclusive to that service for now. We got side quests. Ah, uh, there's a side quest to immediately go back to where I came from. Hell yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that right away. party member now. I can do whatever I want. Yeah, get some levels, do some side quests. Maybe I'll get a better sword. dude marked it. Yeah, okay. The NPC is marked on the map. I just gotta go there. They added a few bigger games to arcade in the last couple weeks. Miss this one played Oregon Trail a lot. Was it like a new version of Oregon Trail? I mean, I guess you can never make Oregon Trail too many times. It is beautiful. Look at all these items I'm getting. Get out of here, kid. I 
Uh oh. Gotta pick the right dialogue. Duh. I gotta keep gotta keep tugging at those heartstrings, I guess. Come on, kid. You get it wrong too many times and he he just stays there and dies. There we go. Yeah, you gotta gotta run the guilt train on that kid. It's for his own good. Like guilt usually is when applied to a child. Witch Hunter, yes, that's correct. That is what exactly what this is, and it's uh, it's not uh, disappointing so far. It is very much a uh, a Final Fantasy style game. Look at those fish! Just giant pot, pot. In this house, I have one bed, a pile of clothes, a pot, and a bench. A cutting bench. That's all I need. That is very... Oh, man. I just can't get over it. That is exactly a Final Fantasy VII house. One bed. One stove. A giant bottle. Yeah, going in wells? That's a Dragon Quest thing. What are you doing, Final Fantasy? What are you doing? Okay. Zoom. Zoom. This wouldn't even have sold one million copies, IMO, so thank you, Apple. I oh, know, I agree. I I mean their best bet would be to talk to a service. Like getting on Game Pass is how games like this survive these days. Um Or you like you have a really a really powerful gimmick about your game, and then somebody like like Devolver picks it up, and they're they're pretty good about pushing sales, or or getting games to sell, getting games in front of people. But yeah, are those camera moves fun and interesting, or just annoying? Uh, they're fun and interesting so far. There's there's a lot of cracks in the process. Uh, there's a, there's there's some quick and dirty aspect to it, but oh wait, no, there you are, kid. Okay. Key acquired. I don't remember where that key... Okay, so you get keys for finishing quests, and then you can spend those, or you can use those to open chests. Interesting. I guess it does make more sense that an NPC would have, like, a key than, an, you know, like, a whole breastplate. Or a laser sword. That's still kind of weird they give you keys, though. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for Devolver's E3. Yeah, the E3 this year is going to be pretty wild. Looking forward to what they've what they've found... They do a really good job finding and incubating really cool projects. Uh, find another option in New District. That's where I'm at, right? That This is New District? Maybe that lighthouse thing? I gotta use the restroom! I'll be right back. See you guys soon. Hey, I'm back. Got some more water. Because we are hydro homies up in here. Up in here, we stretch, we stretch, up in here. We drink water, we uh, text our mothers, we eat our vegetables. Vegetables and lean proteins, yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Gotta respect how fast I can pee. I mean, to, to be fair, there's a bathroom like right there. This is the perfect gamer spot. It really is. Like, there, I, there's actually, like, tons of windows in this room, so it's, like, kind of open. It's a little breezy. Uh, there's a bathroom right there. There's a kitchen right there. Ooh. 
Oops. Prefer the original Hydro Homies, but Reddit it ruined it. Wait, there's multiple? I don't have a Bacteria key. <laughs> Reddit does that. Eh, people do that, you know? Enough people in a space can make anything seem unsavory. Are you playing this on? A MacBook. Which was a bit of a pain to get hooked up and like working with uh, HDMI both to capture and to my display, but finally got it there. Oh shit, the fucking Time Force showed up. Alright, so there's like a Team Rocket. That's happened sometimes. I like the leggings my guy on the right is, is packing now. That man has such shapely legs. Oh, well, is this angry Pop Tart on the left? Wow. Music is telling you pretty much all you need to know about this uh, this trio, I think. I like her, her like, mecha dress. Oh. We're gonna do a damn pose. An intro. Yeah. God. Wow. And we're fighting. Okay. That's the other thing. Final Fantasy games were really goofy. They used to be. Um, they had moments where they just got weirdly goofy. 7 Remake actually brought that back. It was actually nice. Uh, because a lot of games... Like, kind of starting with... 10, I want to say. Started to take themselves a bit more seriously. They had musical numbers? Yeah. Numbers too much of an edgelord? Yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to put all, like, shifts in tone on Nomura. Which I, I have for years. It's, uh... Why are we floating in space? Oh, interesting, though. They're kind of, they're arranged in a particular way. I was going to say, like, when I first saw that cleave technique, I was like, there's there's some kind of trigger feeling about that. But this... Okay, so they're going to be behind him so that my slash won't hit them. That's pretty cool. Is there a way to move my characters or maybe swap positions? So, yeah. I'm sure I'm meant to do this for tutorial purposes so that they show me what... Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, yeah... She can curve spells around and hit them. Smart. Prepare thyself for pain. I mean, I can just go straight there from my perspective. Shit. You're not doing so hot, huh? These villains are missing a cute Meowth, that's right. There's still time. Once you once we kick their ass, which I'm sure will be the first of many times, we may get a catchphrase. It's a 
pretty thumping beat. Very dramatic death, too, because of course. I thought you trained it to the max. This guy's out here giving up on me. I don't think I can analyze the dude who's knocked out. Dang it. Whoa, wait, I can curve spells too? Oh. But I can't curve this. Okay, it, there's a little icon. Music is pretty dope. This is the one that played in the tiny toy room with the two golden stars for me for now. I was I was really into that boss theme. It was a uh, it was a very um, chaotic piece of music, but I I still really liked it. Got to train more. Well said, buddy. Oh, you'll have to watch the bot. Yeah, that was that was way at the beginning. There was essentially a uh, <laughs> there was essentially a um, scorp or like a scorpion mech fight. Oh, you can actually like replay. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you can redo the short story sequences. Yeah. That guy's 789. Thanks for the sub. Can you replay the boss fights? That doesn't seem to be a thing. I mean, there aren't many JRPGs that allow you to do that, really. Not that I can think of. Uh-oh, if the couple goes up to the tower, we'll be bonded for all eternity. Better walk up there with this anime girl I just met. I guess we knew each other for a while. Maybe we're childhood friends. I like how with Amnesia, you can be childhood friends with a girl, but also just meet her. And fall instantly in love with her no matter what. Although I have to admit, romance was always just one factor of, like, a Sakaguchi... Uh, Final Fantasy narrative. It wasn't everything. Usually, like, romance was just one of the things that one of the characters was going through. Whereas everyone else had a bunch of other shit going on. Which I appreciated. Hmm. I'd be very surprised if you could replay boss fights, but I like the idea. Um... 7 Remake had a feature kind of like that. There were just optional boss fights you could pick from a menu. Hey, what's up, Zach? We're out here playing big video games. Are you telling me where to go grind? Oh, okay. That's not the money they take in town, so it's not really money. <laughs> it's not the money itself that has the value, but the emotion behind it. So it's good enough for fortune telling. Oh, okay. That's on PC. I mean, sort of. It's on a PC. It's on a MacBook that's sitting on the floor. Yeah, I guess I guess now that I think about it, I probably could have set up a virtual machine, but uh, I guess using... We had an actual MacBook, uh, so using that seemed like it was uh, faster. I think, I think that was correct. Also, to be honest, I was kind of looking forward to the challenge of capturing or running a game off a MacBook and capturing everything. 
Uh, it... It largely went according to plan. Oh, hey, I have a key for this. Knight Sword! Equip your Knight Sword. Ooh, I learned Fight Piercing. Fight now pierces, allowing multiple targets. Oh, cool. Well, that's, that's rad. I'm glad that I came over here. <laughs> Oh, going here? Oh, okay. You just stole somebody's trusty sword. Well, if I save the world, then it was worth it, wasn't it? When I go vi vanquish the eternal evil. I guess that's not going to be happening in this game. Man, 7 Remake came out and it's not finished. Fantasia came out and it's not finished. Got world map. Can I save? Oh, this is the world map? Oh, that's not that's gnarly. Cool. Okay. Huh. This map theme feels a little mit Mitsuda, but then again, I just have Square Enix on the brain. I like that a lot. I'm just checking the buttons, seeing what, seeing what any of them do. It bothers me that they released what amounts to the first 20% of Final Fantasy VII Remake, but aren't labeling it as such. Well, it's it's not even... Yeah, I understand that, but I think they went to great... great. Oh, crap. This background is, is fantastic. Um, I think they properly established the, uh, the expectations for, like what remake is going to be compared to the original series. And I, I don't know that you can even hold it against the original 7 as a yardstick of how complete it is anymore. Yeah, it's already kind of forked off into being its own thing. Eh, eh. And of course that's the intent, right? They want to keep it open. Which is to say, as long as people buy them, might as well keep making them. That's, that's to me, honestly, what, what bo that's the core of what bugs me sometimes, is when something is so obviously just commercial, commercial art, as opposed to having a story worth, like, an interesting story to tell. You're not coming to the table with a complete story, you're just seeing, like, how long I'll stay interested. Yeah. It's not that it isn't its own thing, it's falsely advertised it as a complete story. If it were seven if it were Final Fantasy VII Episode One, then it'd be fine. Okay. Alright. Yeah, I see your point. I think it's yeah, I see where you're coming from. I think some people maybe don't even uh don't really think about that or or think about it in those terms. And that's why I think it doesn't bother some people. But I could see why would, that would be bothersome. I mean, it is... I think it is pretty bald in, like... Using, using an older game to sort of create a new thing. Not curve it enough? could argue that 7 Remake is not a remake, but a sequel to 7. Yeah, one of the many. You could argue that. That's true. But then again, yeah, like, I think it's more the, the image floated, the branding, how the game is represented, all that sort of thing. Because I guess, yeah, the expectation was, given the narrative from the, uh, the E3 demo, that it would just be a full remake of 7. Um, and obviously it's, it's not going to be. So there is there is a core of something there. It's not a sequel. It's an alongsider. Well, I think I think its exact its exact relation has yet to be nailed down. Aside from getting a pretty strong indication that there is a relation, which makes it yeah, a sequel, a prequel, a like you said, an alongsider. But in that regard, it's still adding to 
adding and continuing an existing narrative, so. But you're not a, you're not alone in taking exception to that, actually. I think a number of people have. Have have had a sour taste in their mouth for those reasons. I guess I'm lucky enough to not to not have that like that just doesn't really bother me. So I'm gonna be honest, I've been in the position before where like something does bother me and I wish it didn't. Just be like, oh, I just wish I could just put this one thing down in my stupid head and just have a good time like everyone else is. There are certainly times when I feel that way. I'm not saying that anyone does about that game. Uh I don't know that it's well, nothing's worth feeling that amount of inner turmoil about. Specifically video games. Uh the like varying resolution of the imagery is crazy. Ah oh, man, I you know what's what's wild too is one of the reasons that I really liked playing games like Resident Evil or Final Fantasy um, games with pre-rendered backgrounds was to just see the new environments and see what they looked like. See see what like boundless imagination could create uh, and give me like a chance to explore them. Uh, I'm getting that sensation with this game too. I'm excited to go to new areas just because I want to see the physical build of them. I want to see what the what cool backgrounds they make. I find that the games that enchant me the most are the ones that sort of tempt me forward with the environments uh, that they have, um, like the From Software games, Soulsborne games are also much much more along that into that path. A young, gifted magic user in a world where magic is dangerous and hidden. Somewhat familiar. Breath of the Wild 2, in a way. I mean, Breath of the Wild was... was wild. Like, wild. That game was crazy, because you could... If you wanted to see something, you just went there. It wasn't necessarily like a meter drip feed in exchange for, you know, grinding through the fights. You just had to make it there. So sometimes there was like a whole, if there was like a whole gameplay mechanic around going someplace, someplace interesting. Stocking up on food, peppers and things. Or like stock like stocking up to fight a Lionel or something like that. Felt like the Predator sequence strapping up. How long has it been since you watched Spirits Within? Um, since since the movie came out. Ah, I, it keeps defaulting to last attack or last. Okay, it's that's weird. It's what the arrow's over. It's not what the bigger icon is. I see. Okay. That's a fair amount of damage for a poison effect. Now, does poison stick around after battle? I doubt it. It's still there. I'm still bubbling. Okay, never mind. Is it wrong to laugh at Square's hubris with spirits within and making the world's first digital actress? Um. Maybe. I don't know. 
I don't I don't know that it was necessarily an abject failure. It just wasn't that good of a movie. But technologically, I thought it was fine. Somebody's got to do it first, right? That doesn't guarantee that the first person will also be a, a runaway success. We can't all be Jar Jar Binks, you know. What's up, MT? MPT, excuse me. I ought to be saying your name right. Key Orbling? I guess you kill it to make it drop a key, but maybe it runs away really fast. Young Turkey, thanks for the prime. Kill that, do you get a key? Yes, you do. Lucky. Maybe it's like a, a higher chance to drop key or something like that. We're gonna go kill some birds and drop key. This is a very enchanted forest. Very like, op like oblique camera angles too. Is the game that had all, all the environments made in real life? Yes. This looks like a mobile game because it is a mobile game. like miniatures yeah every every background is a diorama that they photographed the enemies themselves appear to just be 3d models is it playstation vibes it's a very big playstation vibe for sure is there a monetary difference for you if i sub using prime or straight sub no there is no monetary difference. The only difference between the two is that uh, a sub, a normal subscription will auto-renew as long as your payment information is current, while a Prime sub gets returned to you after a month. So you use the Prime sub on me or somebody else. You can't give it to anyone else, but after a month it comes back to you. It doesn't automatically go to the last person you gave it to. You gotta come back next month, click the button again. So, that's the difference. I imagine most streamers would like normal subs because they're a little more they're, they're more stable, I guess. It's like if you're streaming, if you, your sub amount is like the baseline you can expect, uh, give or take. Yeah, you gotta manually use Prime subs. I exclusively save my primes for you. Well, thank you, Young Turkey. I appreciate that. White Rabbit Object, thanks for gifting a sub. Oh, to PETA! Hey! That's an, that's an efficient way to call someone out in chat. <laughs> Who needs to see ads? I'm good. Uh, I'm really enjoying this so far. It's very, it's very cozy. Oh wait, I need to... Analyze burb. I love that they tell you what you can steal. It really takes the edge off. I mean, neurotically trying to steal everything in the game from everybody. Oh, you curve it just enough. I have a business inquiry email. I do. It's uh, my first dot last name at gmail.com. So Lawrence dot Sontag at gmail.com. I'm always down to talk business. Ow. I think it's... There we go. This battle theme is growing on me. 
What was your hotmail? It was sirlar at hotmail.com. Uh, I think I read, accidentally registered my Yahoo email too early or couldn't remember the, the password or whatever because that was uber underscore sirlar at yahoo.com. Um, which I had to talk to one girl who was on Yahoo chat for some reason. But that was the, um, that was my like red herring email for a while. I would basically use it to register for services. And then if I started getting like mailing list stuff to that email, I would know which company sold me out because <laughs> it's which whichever one I sold up for. Maybe it would take longer than that, but. Never had a Hotmail. Uh, I, there was a window where Microsoft made you use Microsoft email to sign up for Xbox Live. For the, so for the longest time, my Xbox login was Hotmail. Um, I eventually was able to change it, but... There was a whole effing thing. <laughs> look, look at those flowers. Uh, that's awesome. a Dimension machine. Alright. Sure, yeah, sure. Like Dungeon and Dimension? So you can like turn off, turn off fights if you want. You won't initiate battles even when encountering monsters. Counter monsters will be banished to an alternate dimension where they will be stalked. However, first time encounters will always initiate a battle. Huh. Okay. <laughs> it's got like an. It's got like a fuel tank. Oh, that was a lot. Seven is a lot though. bump to any monsters we've already fought, it seals them away for us. Huh. There's a catch. We can only seal away so many monsters at once. Around 30 or so? I think <laughs> once we go past that dimension, we'll overflow. Then we have to fight all the monsters at once. Oh, oh that's neat, though. Because, yeah, if they're all in one thing, then your AoE skills would mop them up very fast. Okay. Give us some fun ideas, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Oh, I missed it. Can't believe Nobuo did this music. It's grating. That that is a little <sighs> grating. Is yeah, I, grating is a bit too strong. But I I know what you mean. <clears throat> it's uh it's it's very harsh and sharp. But it's funky. You know, it's energetic. All right. It's 
what we call a hot take. Just say it. It's a bit of a hot take. I mean, grading, whatever. That's just one word. It's not really a take. I think it's supposed to sound a little more technological because it's like in a, in a device. Time fades as color does. Which I guess that's kind of true. I want to call it stylistically compressed. Okay, alright. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel like I'm shifting a lot today. I would say that's the uh, the generous a generous description of that music, yeah. I think I think Uematsu's earned some generosity. <laughs> You're playing League of Legends too much. Kina, you have to go outside. You have to get a job, Kina. Pay rent for the love of God. The name I gave you, Kina, it's an old vibrant word meaning destiny. This is on iOS. Oh, Mac OS, but yeah. Apple Arcade. Which I think means it's on Apple TVs? <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you can get the arcade app on Apple TV. Or access the arcade portion of the store. Oh, we got another short story. Yeah? Yeah. Oops, are a little weird. A single ray of sun beamed through the tree leaves, illuminating a lone tree stump. Kina quietly approached it as Leo stood nearby, watching. Uh, my radio voice is going to be very unradio right now. I just drank coconut water, and that always makes me really gummy. Ah. Kina remained silent, taking comfort in the quiet and stillness. Then, as if to touch the sunlight shining through the foliage, she reached out her hand. Yeah, you can kind of hear it there. Uh. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's warm, Kina murmured. She stood below the light, looked up, closed her eyes, and took a deep breath. The smell of the forest and the sun's rays tickled Kina's nostrils and filled her lungs. A gentle wind blew past the two of them. This is my favorite place. It's really special to me. <laughs> Mr. Chris Kringle, you just finished your exam? Hey, congrats. It's time to relax. Kina spoke in a satisfied tone as she smiled at Leo. a nice way to do exposition, I guess. What are humans? Someone got a haircut? Someone did. <clears throat> so wait, no one else here is human? Yeah? What are humans? She had asked this question frequently as a child. Owen, the only other human Kina knew, was an elderly man, quite different from a young girl. 
To her, Owen seemed like a whole different species. To keep young Kina's powers under control, Owen lived in the forest with her and taught her how to survive. But Owen was worried there was one thing Kina could not grasp. Human beings. What is it to be human? Teach me human love. Ah. Owen decided to move into town so Kina could learn about humans. Fortune telling business was useful for teaching Kina about this subject. His clients came from all walks of life, old, young, rich, and poor. Just by listening to their stories, Kina began to grasp the complexity of their feelings, their ambivalent natures, and their various emotions. A real human being. I want to be human and have your human feelings. As a fortune teller, Owen listened to any and all concerns and gave his clients simple advice. His words were always kind and his heart was always open. He supported his clients, consoling those who cried and motivating those I who were afraid. Ambush. We'd better be Their careful. Their attention would melt away just by talking to him. They would come into the shop with dark, heavy expressions and leave looking brighter without fail. Easy and Z, thank you very much for the cheer. This just came out. Come out. It came out about a week ago, I think. Oh, see you, Chris Kringle. Thank you for hanging out. It was good having you in chat. Hopefully you have a great day. Or a great night. A great whatever you've got in front of you. What am I? What are you? All right. Deep thoughts. Big themes. Human nature. Chowder. Oh, Chowder, thank you very much for the 10 sub bomb. That's extremely generous of you, and I... Gosh darn it, I appreciate it. You make sitting on my butt playing video games all day worth it. And I thank you for that. Oh, let me save again. Any plans to replay Fez on Switch? Is that... Why is it... Is it like coming out on Switch or something? Is that a new thing? I never actually did... Finish Fez. Uh, so, maybe. Because I really liked what I played of it. That was a fun game. Whoa! Damn it, Jam! That's a fun sound. It's the sound of you not being bothered. Firemere showed his quality. Hello! Oh, that was in the indie show. Cool! Who, who owns the rights to that? It's interesting. It kind of sounded like somebody was just not having Fez in the world anymore. Or they just canceled two because the internet was mean. I don't know. That's being dismissive. I don't know. I haven't been I haven't been cyber bullied like that, so I can't I can't be snarky. When someone writes a character that the text has to repeatedly assure me isn't human, I tend to get suspicious if they go near broad definitions of what human nature is. Um, no, I mean, they, they said that that uh, she was human. Kina is human. They just kind of grew up in seclusion. So, uh, her, her mentor basically tried to expose her to more people to get her associated with the more, I guess, the more varied aspects of human nature. 
I do think they are setting her up to be a bit of a uh, magical, you know, dream girl with a mysterious power, but she doesn't understand why are humans so evil sometimes? And maybe she should use her power to make humans not be evil, but maybe that's evil too. And you know, that's a good template to set up some very basic moralistic questions. Wait, a Chungus Dono. Holy shit, that is a Chungus Dono. Holy crap. Borden, thank you for calling it out. Chowder, thank you for the Chung. You, uh, you've been hitting me with the Chungus gifts multiple ways. I appreciate your generosity, sir. Like I said, makes it all, makes it all worth it. Thank you very much. Oh, I didn't know that they did this. That's right, I, I was getting those. What did the... What happened? Uh-oh. Uh, uh, that just kind of stopped working. That's bizarre. Huh. Why did that happen? Hey! Okay. It just works. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I am, uh, I am thoroughly pleased with how, how much everything has just worked. Uh, I did not know, and I'm pleasantly surprised at how functional an Xbox controller is on, on Mac OS. That's not something they had to do, and often they would frequently never go out of their way to support any kind of thing like that. So... I'm giving a high high marks for that. Look at this cozy cottage. Man, I'm still I'm still not over just how how charming the backdrops are. A few a few years ago I thought Fantasia was supposed to be a big budget movie of some kind. Sakaguchi kept it vague for years until like last year. Huh, okay. I wonder I wonder where in the in the process did it get, you know, pitched as a Apple Arcade exclusive or did that did that come into the equation? Xbox controllers just work on everything. You just plug it in and it works. It's really nice, yeah. I mean, PlayStation 4 controllers are Bluetooth now, so they're pretty pretty useful all over the place too. Oh, we knew early on that it was something exclusive with Apple. I just couldn't decipher what. Maybe it was just me. Okay. I mean, Fantasia is an old Disney movie. Fantasian is this game. But yeah. I mean, I thought that's what they meant. I follow them on Twitter and I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> huh. It's a weird get. Like, you wouldn't expect whoever's running Apple Arcade to pursue that kind of game or, or the people who would be interested in that kind of game. Do I get a cutesy animal sidekick? Like I should be toasting somebody like a I should have a champagne flute in my hand listening to this like laughing pleasantly while wearing a tie <laughs> oh. this would be like in the 
if I ever throw a classy holiday party, this is the music that I wanna I wanna have going. I cannot. I, it's Tioris, but I cannot see. Like out of the corner of my every time, I see clitoris. Every time, just nah. This is brunch music. Yeah, like. An orange heavy slice of uh, French toast, a French pressed coffee, some sliced uh, sliced strawberry and banana in a bowl. Talking about nothing. Everyone just wants to see clitoris where there aren't any. Oh, we're all trying to find it. God, my God, one of these days. <laughs> Uh, there is no comedic ground more fertile than being a dude who can't find, who can't, <laughs> well, who can't properly identify any sort of genital. What the hell is that thing? I don't know. One of your best non-jokes so far. I do a lot of that, don't I? Okay, so she's like, yeah. She's, she's a magical girl who was raised in the woods and is, like, attuned to the forest spirits. So, it's got that, like, magical girl. What is it? Something something born yesterday? Ah, uh, that's such a good name for the trope. I don't know if that's where they're going with this. She hasn't, like, she, there's gonna have to be a scene where she freaks out and really hurts somebody, right? Or, like, burns down a house. Aerith? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yes, exactly that. 100% exactly. She's even talking about flowers and shit. Oh, Born Sexy Yesterday. That is the one, yeah. Not not quite that, no. So like, this would be this would be a scene that would just be pantomimed by like boxy 3D characters in a PS1 era Final Fantasy. Doing a whole like prose sequence allows them to actually describe the character motions and the nuances of what the characters are doing a little more closely than just like wobbly animatronics can and and just dialogue. So all the like. All the narration is kind of interesting. It's interesting because I, I kind of didn't mind how implicit character moments had to be back in the PS1 era. Because all you had was dialogue and like a little paper dolls, basically. So you had to leave a something to the imagination, which this is still kind of doing, just because it is still narration and a uh, and background art. Oh, it's interesting. It's interesting. It won't help the game overall, though, because the general hashtag gamer doesn't like reading too much. Well, sure. Um, this is clearly not a game that's trying to target as massive market as it possibly can. Uh, I don't think anyone who dislikes reading is going to even pursue this game in the first place. Nope. Just like that. All you need is a all you need is a waifu to guide you and you can instantly attune to the forest spirits. That's fair honestly. Would you recommend it so far? Oh yeah. If if you like classic RPGs 
or if you if you love throwback kind of PS1 era RPGs, this is an amazing version of that. Uh, I'm still not sure how mechanically complicated it's going to get, but the combination of the like targeting system plus the ability to stack up monster fights and do them all at once. That's kind of where the money is, because it essentially means if you if you like play the AOE game right, you can get through the game much more efficiently. You can just like skip a lot of the fights. Is it only on the arcade? Right now, yeah, it's only on Apple Arcade. got super love smell. I just read that Nobuo said he wanted to avoid conventional JRPG music and there's a lot of improvisation in the music, which he's never done in a game before, per an IGN article. That reads. Yeah, that does read. I think it it kind of matches the sort of rough and tumble sensibility of, of the game itself. Like, I'll just make it. And it'll like it'll be a little smudgy and you'll be able to see the like You'll be able to see the glue, you'll be able to see the paint. But you know, it's always been it's always been a story on a stage. So it's almost like literalizing that uh that format. So I feel like if the music is that way too. That makes sense. Sort of I'll just do it live. Uh yeah, the you know what it reminds me of? The scene transitions are nearly identical to what happens in like Google Street View. Where it has like it has 3D data and it has two still images and it sort of like AI morphs that uh that data onto the uh the 3D image as it zooms around, but I think the 3D data doesn't precisely match the 2D pictures. So you get some interesting like there's some interesting artifacts in the transitions, but they look really good. Oh, uh, see, like that's it's interesting because that is a, like pretty pretty tight depth of field, but it doesn't apply to the the character. So, yet again, you have a character that's like rendered in a a different way, really makes the character stand out. And then you have things like this, where like the mask doesn't really line up perfectly with the with the single tree. Ooh, yeah, that's that's some big big Google Map energy right there. Classic ass 3D on 2D, yeah, yeah. It has. I don't know. I'm okay with it being a little dirty. I think it ought to be. I want to see. A, I want to. I want to bop a full fight. I want to see what that looks like. I love that they have little little like treasure crannies tucked away behind. So they actually use perspective. It's definitely artisanal. Yeah, Ayanu, that's a perfect word for it. Uh, it's arts and crafts, you know? It's hot glue. Toxic staff. You mean like those jerks at the at the Applebee's? Threw me out after 20 drinks. Please. That's not I'm barely getting started, alright? Hope your days Oh, Halo bottom ice teddy bear. 
Hope your day is going well. I fractured my foot doing Muay Thai. You're on my comfort streamer tonight. Man, are you the are you the second such person to fracture your foot doing Muay Thai? Because I swear, somebody else did that too. By accidentally kicking a beam behind a bag or something. Okay, so they keep popping in. All right. It does feel good to like hit three or four of them in one go. Is that like a free turn? What is that? Turn steel. Okay, yeah, I can just, just let you go again. Well, that's pretty dang useful. Oh! I'm picking up some hot apple chivos for Steph. I like JRPGs where you have some sort of attack, arc, and zone. I used to play Arc of the Twilight. Arc Twilight of the Spirit so much as a kid. Oh, yeah! Tactical RPG. Those are fun. This game has has elements of that. Because you can clearly see. It's a neat way to do it though. Make it so like you can do all of your fights at once if you if you'd prefer to do it that way. I feel like they do probably go by faster in the long run that way. Uh, have you ever played Disco Elysium on stream? Yes! Uh, they apparently released a fully voice-acted version last month or so. Seems like the kind of big think game that would make for good content. I agree. Especially since it's fully voiced. I feel like there's just less empty air of me reading uh, in a game like that. But yeah, no, I, I intend to stream it. Just so many other things. So many other games to play. They're all wonderful and I love them all. I mean, this game's pretty cool so far. Okay, yeah, that's a money tree. That is what that is. Wow. I thought they were being, uh, cute. 
Oh, that is an angry money tree. Yep. That's cool, but does it have Cloud? Main character's got some Cloud vibes. He's a bit more approachable than Cloud, though. So far. This is a different kind of boss fight. This feels more like a, a what I would consider a typical Nomura battle theme to be. It's got a lot of the it's got a lot of the like percussive elements. It's got like that really jazzy bass line that goes with a pretty kind of broken uh, rhythm. The piano is kind of all over the place though. That's very very jazzy too. Reminds me a lot of like some Final Fantasy VI music in the best way. Nope. Sorry, Money Tree. I'm just going after that that hot fruit. We could farm it. I'm not allowed to say that. I say that. Ow. Interesting breakdown. Oops. Oh man. Why do we like jazz so much? By all accounts, it doesn't make a lot of sense with how disjointed it's meant to be. I mean, it's 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 those improvisations and those that disjointedness that like speaks to our sense of humanity. That's what's so relentlessly fascinating about it is that it can selectively break rules but it still sounds good or it sounds a certain way but you can't randomize the breaking of the rules you have to feel it you have to feel it uh there's there's been no amount of academic study can make it make sense meant to be was dictated by a bunch of guys hundreds of years ago i mean there's that too i think it's more in the sense of like there are rules about what works and doesn't work in music there's music theory and it's largely accurate uh about like the terms of frequencies that work in scales like stuff like that there are rules and uh they're pretty consistent Dumb jazz fan here. The eventual payoffs uh, amongst off-kilter stuff is satisfying to my brain. Alright. Makes sense to me. I want to poison again. Uh-oh. I don't really have a guard. Now that I think about it. No! We got sapped. Ain't that the way. Jazz definitely has its theory and has its own rules like any music does, just different ones. Uh, you'll still see people following them though, or it'll sound awful. Yeah. I... 
I'm not I'm not a jazz expert by any stretch, so I'm not familiar with that set of rules. I'm I mean I'm not I'm not a trained musician at all, so I'm not really familiar with any of the rules. Mostly just kind of you know self-taught, learn by ear kind of thing. Um, but it is I do find that that middle ground interesting, where there's like there's things you can do, there's things you can't ever do, and then there's like this middle ground where sometimes you can get away with certain things. In context, like if, if other things are executed well. That's the fun part. Are we sapping? Maybe if I hit him while he's sapped, he'll like stop sapping. Oh, he didn't stop, alright. Ugh. Oh, there we go. I was like, I want that poison effect again. That was really nice. Knock the shit out of that tree. I'm gonna rip all of its fruit off. Music taste is always 100% valid and acceptable. Yeah, the, I, there was a time when I was pretentious about music. Now I just, I'm just glad if anyone can find something that makes them feel, you know? That makes them feel how they want, or makes them feel new things. Makes them grow emotionally. Broadens horizons. As long as you can find that. Then, hey, it did it. It did it, it did what it was supposed to do. There's also just like music is so deeply tied to the human experience that you, there's no music that's good for every situation, for every person, from every background. There's music that is that is intellectually interesting, but that may not mean that it evokes an emotional response from everybody who hears it. Uh, so a song that means nothing to you at one point in your life might might suddenly put everything in new perspective later when you have different experiences. I had a roommate who didn't get music. Yeah, some people just don't, it's fine. Some people don't like food, can you imagine? Yosarian, thank you for the prime. She's gonna use her magic. Food is inconvenient, keeps my hands busy for too long. You just need nutrient sludge. You need G fuel. Which, I have the button set up, but I'm not going to use it yet because it says that my discount code is 30% and it's not yet. It will be on Thursday. So stock up your G fuel orders now, everyone. Get them ready to go. Heard of a band called, or a group called Dirty Loops? Like a, ja a pop jazz band. I think somebody's, somebody's recommended them. That sounds familiar. <laughs> Treadmiller replacements like Huel and Soylent, but it was more trouble than it was worth. Mainly, it made me bloated and gassy. Ah, okay. Huh. Their Soylent and Huel are pretty high in fiber, so that may be part of it. You may be getting that, uh, May actually be like a probiotic way of the titting you. I don't know how long that lasted, but for me, I I I'm pretty happy with Huel. I also have Control, which is like a a milk-based uh, meal replacement powder, and it's fine. It just it's like kind of gritty and it kind of hangs in the throat. So if I like have it and then start streaming, my throat gets all gummed up with uh, Huel particles. But it's certainly very cost-effective, and if you can if you can uh, treat food is a boring activity that you could probably lose weight with it pretty easily too. Here I am eating 10 sliders like I'm on death row. Whatever, man. It's quarantine. Sometimes we need creature comforts. Speaking of, I think I'm going to go pursue those now. So I think that'll be the end of the stream today. 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go cook dinner. Um, to see how many calories I have to work with. I had a, uh, I had a quest bar while I was setting up the MacBook, and I don't think I put that on my calendar yet, so. I'm trying to hit that, what, 1,700 cals a day? It's pretty doable. I just gotta do that for, like, six months. And then there's beer, so it is what it is. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. This is a really cool game. Uh, I'm, I would like to play more of it if this is not as much of a pain to set up as <laughs> next time as it was this time. Getting it, man, getting this monitor to accept a signal from a Mac was just a pain. I don't know why. I just didn't want to do it. Just, meh, just shut down. No. Jeez, so dramatic. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll find somebody to raid. There's, I'm sure there's plenty of friends out there on the internet streaming video games. So, thanks again. Uh, let's see here. Tomorrow's... I, if I stream tomorrow, it'll be later. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna set aside a little more time to write inside games. I want it to be, I want it to be a little funnier. A little, a little more inter, 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 entertainment in there. Mix in the, mix in the juice. So, I'm dedicating some time to it. But, I'll see you later. Oh, this Saturday is the, uh, 24 hour Doom stream. So, I'll be talking with Hugo Martin at around 10 a.m. Pacific on Saturday. And then around 11, whatever, we'll get started. Start on Doom 2016. Go all the way through that, then through Eternal, then through uh, Ancient Gods 1 and 2. As long as there's uh, subs in the gas tank, we'll keep going. We'll keep dooming. Learning about Doom lore. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. <laughs>